Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a rational expression with powers of i. We've done powers of i before so you should be familiar with these types of problems and you might even be questioning this question like isn't this too easy? Well, kind of if you know the uh, subject uh, but I will also talk about a generalization of this method. And later on, maybe we can do a problem that is more general, but I just wanted to make this numerical. Okay, great. So we have powers of i that are consecutive, so no big deal, right? How do you add powers of i? So here's a couple of things to know. i to the power 1 is i itself. i to the second power, by definition, is negative 1. i to the third power is i squared multiplied by i, by definition of exponentials, and or I should say, properties of exponents maybe and i squared is negative 1 so this should be negative i and i to the fourth power you can look at it different ways i squared squared which is negative 1 squared and that's going to be positive 1 so powers of i basically cycle i negative 1 negative i1 i negative 1 negative i1 so on and so forth in other words since i to the fourth is 1 if you raise this to any integer power you're still going to get 1 so when the power of i is a multiple of 4, you get 1, and this just keeps repeating. And when you have a number that is 1 mod 4, in other words, it leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 4, something like e to the power 4k plus 1, then this can be broken down into i to the 4k times i to the first. And since this is 1 all the time, if k is an integer, of course, we n and k are integers, needless to say, right? We already talked about it. It will be equivalent to i. So what you really care about is the remainder. You take the exponent, let's say we're dealing with something like this, right? You just care about the exponent, so this would be equivalent to i to the power 3, which is negative i. This allows you to evaluate very, very high powers of i, and of course to do sums like these. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this works. So I have this sum that goes all the way up to 28th power. So the question is, since we have i squared is equal to negative 1 and i cubed is equal to negative i, I notice that the, when you add the first four terms, I get a 0. And this always repeats. So we always get 0 from four consecutive terms. Doesn't matter where you start, doesn't matter where you end, as long as they are consecutive. Okay? So we'll be getting a bunch of zeros followed by who knows what. This is a 0. How many packets of this do I have? So that kind of brings us down to the number of terms. So the question is, how many terms do we have? How do you find it? You look at the exponents. This starts with i to the power 0, ends with i to the power 28, which tells us that, okay, you have 29 terms, which means you're going to be able to make groups of 4. There is 7 groups of 4, and you're going to have a leftover, a remainder. And that will be either the last term or the first term. You make sure it's one of those. And guess what? Those are equal. And they're always going to be equal, right? Are they? Well, in this case, since we have a remainder of 1, they should be, right? So it doesn't matter which one you take. And if you take i to the power 28, that's absolutely 1. If you take the first term, that is definitely a 1, isn't it? So, the answer is 1 for the numerator, but what about the denominator? So, the denominator is a different ball game. We're going to have to add to all the way up to i to the power 14, but this gives us 15 terms. So, how many remainders, remaining terms are we going to have? Well, the closest multiple of 4 is 12, because 3 times 4 is 12, so we're going to have 3 terms left over. And guess what? I'd like to pick the first 3, because I don't even see the last 3. I only see the last one because I didn't write it. I mean, come on, that makes sense, right? And i squared is negative 1. This gives us i as the sum of this finite series. Wait a minute, did I say series? Yes, that's going to bring us to another thing, which is the second method. But before that, let's go ahead and simplify this. So we had 1 plus i plus i squared all the way up to 28th power, and then that is divided by all the way up to 14th power. We got 1 for this and i for that. i for i. i for an i. Okay. How do you simplify this? Multiply by negative i. Some people multiply by i, which is kind of weird because 
the conjugate of i, come on people, 0 plus i, the conjugate is 0 minus i, which is minus i or negative i, whatever you want to say. So this is going to be negative i squared, which is positive 1. Forget about it, and the answer is negative i. Okay? Cool. So that's the first method. Do you like it? I hope you do. Let's continue with the second. Did I say I was going to introduce two methods? I don't know. I'm also going to talk about the generalization, if I don't forget, within the next two, three minutes. Okay? I'm planning to take that long. Hopefully less. So the second method is the following. We have a sum like this. And we have a formula. What is the formula? 1 plus r plus r squared, dot, dot, dot. If you end up with r to power n minus 1, it's 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. You can also switch them around depending on, depending on the r value. Here it doesn't matter. I guess the first one is better. Anyways, whatever. You get the idea. r is the common ratio. This is a geometric series. It's finite. So we include r to the power n. Why did I end up with r to the n minus 1? Because I want to have n terms. You see, you always want to have n terms. So in other words, n is the number of terms. And n number makes sense, right? So here we're going to get the following. 1 minus, oh, by the way, how do you kind of get to r to the n from r to the power n minus 1? You just increase the exponent by 1. So it's going to be 1 minus i to the 29th divided by 1 minus i. And we can say the same thing or something similar for the sum that is up to the 14th power. That's going to be 1 minus i to the 15 divided by 1 minus i. So now we have the following thing. 1 minus i to the 29th divided by 1 minus i divided by 1 minus i to the 15th divided by 1 minus i. 1 minus i cancels out because it's not 0. i to the power 29. Remember what I said about the remainders? What was it? You divide the exponent by 4 and look at the remainder. 29 leaves a remainder of 1. So it's going to be the uh, same as i to the power 1. 15 leaves a remainder of 3. Remember, we looked at it before. That's going to leave us with 1 minus i cubed, which is negative i, which gives us 1 minus i over 1 plus i. Uh-oh, that wasn't the answer with the first method. It wasn't, and it was, actually. It depends, right, what you do to this or how you treat it. So treat it well, multiply by the conjugate, and you'll get 1 minus i squared, which is negative 2i, and this is 2, a squared plus b squared, Cancel, cancel, negative i. Exactly, same thing, right? Great. Now I remember, let's talk about the general method. So generally, we can write this as follows. Since 28 is a multiple of 4, by the way, my initial goal was to give you this problem, but then I changed it to a numerical one. Why? I don't know. I don't remember. I probably made it, wanted to make it easier. But we will do this case or something like this later. But we're going to do this anyways. So by using the exact same formula, I get the following. 1 minus i to the power 4n plus 1 divided by 1 minus i divided by 1 minus i to the power 2n plus 1 divided by 1 minus i. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel out them again. And this time I'm going to go ahead and write this as i to the power 4n times i to the 1. Remember we already talked about it. And now this becomes 1. So we get 1 minus i over hmm, 1 minus negative 1 to the power n times i. Now something interesting happened here because the answer isn't always i, or I'm sorry, negative i. And I wanted to emphasize it, that's why I'm showing you the general case, because it depends. It depends on what? It depends on the value of n. If n is even, so we can kind of take this expression and write it as, I don't know if I should write it like this, maybe it's a little better. We, we kind of need to think about it uh, piecewisely. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if n is even, then we get a negative 1 to the power 2, something like that, which is going to give us 1 minus i over 1 minus i, which is going to be 1. So it's going to be 1 if n is even. This is the general case. And if n is odd, you're going to get negative i, as in our case, because remember, n was 7 in our case, and when n is odd, you're going to get negative i all the time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.